Hey everyone, it's Vickerman with another Pillars of Eternity guide. Uh, with the full disclaimer that I'm not an expert, but I do have some ideas that so, they're just so crazy they just might work. So today we're going to talk a little bit about tanking, which, you know, is pretty darn important for your party. So I'm going to kind of throw in my two cents to see what, uh, to what you think about some of the ideas that I have. So the first thing we're going to talk about is uh, kind of classes for your uh, tank. Really, the ideal class is probably going to be your fighter uh, in most cases uh, because, you know, they've got that constant recovery. They're going to be regenerating endurance. Uh, they have high, uh, high def very high deflection. And if you give them the stats that you would normally give to a fighter, they're going to have really good, you know, fortitude, reflex, and potentially will. Maybe not. So, yeah, it's, uh, they also have high endurance and uh, high health. So, they're kind of a, a good, good choice for that. But uh, we're going to start by thinking of maybe some other classes as well. That's pretty obvious that the fighter is going to be great at tanking. Now, um, the other great option is a paladin. Now, you probably only want to do the paladin as a tank if it's going to be your main hero. And the reason is, is because of the faith and conviction uh, paladin bonus. They have an inherent bonus to all their defenses that's based on their reputation which, you know, uh, if you're familiar with the Paladin class, when you go next, you have to pick an order. And each order has favored dispositions. Such as this one favors cruel and aggressive and does not like benevolent and diplomatic. So if you choose this, you're going to want to choose options that match these uh, certain characteristics. Because the more you do, the better your defenses are going to be, the better tank you're going to be. Uh, and I should mention that kind of the difference between these two strategies is kind of, I mean, the fighter does have a lot of deflection, but the difference between these two classes as far as their way of being tanks is kind of the the classic, you know, the difference between the tank that's going to take a whole lot of damage and just survive uh, versus... Uh, versus the tank that is just going to prevent damage from occurring to them. So the Paladin, with all the bonuses to deflection and all their other defenses, is really more about not getting the damage at all. You know, damage mitigation is the name of the game, whereas the fighter is just tough enough to absorb a lot of it. Now they, will de they will defend against a lot of things, uh, but they are tough enough to handle a lot more. So let's go ahead with the Paladin on this case. Uh, in this case, because this is a player character. This is a new game here. Um, <clears throat> and so they're going to be uh, able to take advantage of these disposition bonuses. So if you're really... If you're really not sure about your ability to follow the disposition, you can turn on an option that will show what the different dialogue options are going to uh, give you as far as your personality disposition. So that makes it a little easier. So every time you see Benevolent, you click that. Never click Deceptive or Cruel for this particular one, the Kind Wayfarers. So that makes it a little easier if you're really wanting to make sure that you're going to be effective. Uh, without, I mean, you can, you know, if you if you feel confident in your abilities, then by all means, leave it off. But, you know, if you want to make sure, you might want to turn it on. It's up to you. And, uh, you know, dis the, the difficulty of this game that you set for yourself is all very, very much your own personal thing. There are so many options. But anyway... I'm going to pick the Gold Pact Knights. They favor stoicism and rationality. They don't like passion or aggression. They don't care whether you're benevolent or cruel. Uh, or any of the other ones. There are quite a few things. 
I guess, clever they don't really care about. So, now let's check these out. The abilities for a paladin. This uh, gives you burn damage to your next attacks. You know, for your tanking paladin, you're probably going to want to lay on hands instead. Uh, you can recover endurance. Oh, it's, it's for the cell. I thought that it was only for allies, but you can heal yourself. Well, then clearly this is, this is the way to go. Now for stats, you may be thinking, don't you want 18 constitution? And uh, in this case, maybe not. Uh, but what you do want to do is pump up the resolve and you want to pump up perception. Those are the two most important for the Paladin class because they both contribute to deflection. Now, with with this bonus of, you know, 27 plus 7, it's a plus 34 deflection. You combine that with a shield with a pretty good deflection rate and your naturally high deflection as a Paladin, you are basically going to be... I mean, you're going to be so hard to hit. And even if they do hit, most of the time they're just going to graze you, which is fantastic. So that really is a viable way to do it. Uh, it recommends some intellect for the Paladin as well. And uh, that's really kind of up to you. I would think that that was more the case if you want to go offensive Paladin. Uh, whereas in this case, we're defensive. So yeah, the Paladin can be an offensive class as well. You'd want a whole lot more might and intellect in that case to take advantage of a more duration and area of effect of your abilities and more damage. But you know, as a tank, damage dealing is not going to be all that important. Uh, you also get a lot of interrupt with high perception as well, which is fantastic. Uh, since you're going to be hitting the enemies, maybe you maybe you don't hit for very much uh, because you're low might. But if every time you hit, you're kind of interrupting the enemy's abilities, making them, you know, again, not able to hit you, then you're really being an effective tank. I think these stats are okay. Um, we'll keep that just so that we make sure that we keep that high re resolve. Oh, oh, never mind. Look at this. They changed it. I don't think resolve was uh, was there until you actually made it to the culture screen. That's good. That was one of the little pet peeves I had. Maybe we'll pick up one that raises perception so that uh, so that perception and resolve are both pretty high. But uh, the thing about that is. It gives you the two-handed weapon, which, you know, you can always get another weapon fairly easily at the beginning of the game, I would think. Oh, you, yeah, let's do that. It gives us a nice balanced thing. And, you know, for your skills, it's kind of to your... to whatever you want to do. Uh, skills are kind of a separate deal. Maybe I'll talk about that at some point, but uh, they're kind of a separate deal, and you kind of have to just... As long as you have a party member who's good at all of them, then you'll be fine. So, I don't know. Something like uh, athletics and mechanics? Sure. That's fine. Yep, whatever. Stoic yeah. seems like it's what I should pick for the uh, gold pack knight dude. Uh, name him Vulcan, because, you know, the gold pack knights are kind of like Vulcans, right? So, yes, yes, we're going to have the opening cutscene here. Um, and in this case, we're probably going to want to go over to Hayoden and just make sure that we... Uh, no, what kind of kind you don't live off of... To make sure that we've got our shield that we want. You heard the man. Let's right. get going before you keel over. Anyone need supplies? I've got sundries for. 
Rata. Say, is there anything you need? Okay. So, yeah, let's go ahead and turn on the, uh, maybe you can't change that during the actual game. All right, show show personality reputation. That's where you do it to see what the uh, what the options have for you. Okay, I'm gonna pop over here. Take this stuff. All right, so something else you need? You got a shield there. Thought you might. All right, so small shield gives eight deflection. It does not reduce the accuracy. So, you know, if we can get away with it, it might be good to use that one instead. So deflection right now is 42. It's pretty darn good without a shield. The unfortunate thing about this build is fortitude is gonna be kind of low because might and constitution are low. Something else you need? Well, let's just go with the medium shield and for a one-handed weapon I don't know uh, is this one hand no she's got an she's got an axe maybe we'll t we'll do uh, isn't a spear one-handed as well I don't think they have any of those uh, that's two-handed isn't it yeah Well, let's just uh, let's just do a, f a sword. Fair enough. So let's see what kind of uh, deflection we can get with this. Fifty-four deflection at level one, with very little uh, very little bonuses besides that. So yeah, like I said, this. This guy is going to be hard to hit, and when they do hit, it's not going to be as much. So he can be pretty effective as a tank. So usually I would have Kalisha be doing mm. the... Uh, oh, he does, doesn't even have that equipped, does he? Sure. Let's check by those outcropping. All right, so let's see how this works. Take him down. Let's go ahead and engage. Yep, yep, yep. Got it, got it, got it. So let's uh, speed this up a bit. Yeah, his, uh, his accuracy isn't too great. All right, so I think, yeah, if you click on this, you can see the rolls and how it all came out. So we got hits. There wasn't quite as many misses as I expected. But, you know, at level one, what can you expect? Without our uh, faith and conviction bonuses at all. But yeah, this is, uh, I haven't gone too far with the Paladin, so I can't show you a higher level build. But this particular build is right on track to be pretty darn effective as a tank. Now, if you don't want to play a paladin, you probably shouldn't do this particular thing with a paladin. They probably don't want to be your tank. They can be an off tank, but they don't need to be your tank. So let's switch over to another game where I've got a fighter 
who is the NPC tank for me. Okay, so here we are with a party and the main hero here is a cypher. And we have a fighter here. Hey. Who is the main tank for us. And as you can see, that this one's actually uh, built by Obsidian, so maybe not. Maybe a little, you know, it's a bit different. They they kind of put this guy together as far as stats, so... Um, yeah, he's very effective as a tank, though, but you could use him as a warrior as well. There's kind of some flexibility in this stat allocation. But the point is, he's got high constitution. And uh, he's actually got high might, too. Which you might be thinking, you know, okay, that makes some sense for dealing damage. Uh, but it also gives him more fortitude, especially with that constitution. So a whole lot of things that affect fortitude are going to be really... He's going to be able to be really good at stopping those kind of things. So you can see his uh, defenses are pretty darn high. So, yeah... That's kind of kind of a good stat allocation for a fighter. I think that if I was doing them myself, maybe less might pump some more into resolve. And uh, probably some perception as well, just for that interrupt chance. Uh, because you're going to be in melee combat with a lot of the, the main enemies of the party, so it's going to be nice to have some interrupt on your tank as well. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of a fight. And these guys, what they'll do is they'll kind of do a ranged attack and then they'll close in on you, I think. If I recall. And they did it right on this guy. Scoot over if you would. Hey. So I'm going to have the tank engage. On your word. Alright, and in this hmm? case, the cipher is a melee cipher and okay so the the thing to know when you're tanking is you want to watch these engagement lines so the red lines from the enemies are going into uh, him and there's also lines going back which means these guys are both engaged with him makes it much less what? likely for them to attack someone else who comes along into melee range so you know if you can get the tank to engage the enemies before that happens, or get the enemies to engage the tank, yes. then you can pretty safely get your Aye. melee yes. DPS type of characters Aye. into position. So we'll just cast a little mm. spells. Yeah. Have the cypher do some stuff. Hmm? And yeah, so the, this guy actually has a vigorous defense. Allows him to deflect all incoming blows, drastically increasing all defenses for a short time. So, you know, you can do that for even more of a buff when you are expecting a whole bunch of damage to come in. And, of course, the fighter also has quite a few kind of crowd control abilities, like knocking down and putting debilitating statuses on the enemy. So, really, he's uh, very, well, very well put together. I've... Uh, pick things quite intentionally for him to be a tank rather than to do a whole lot of damage and that sort of thing so yeah he is a very good uh, very good way to allocate your stats and hey. put together a tank for your party as well and you can do the you can make your own character instead of that particular one who's in the game if you'd rather have a particular min max set of abilities but i think uh if you use him you'll you won't be sorry i've been very pleased with his you know his ability to tank the enemies and i think that that is probably about it for now if i f find out some more information maybe we may make a second video about this subject but you know as we play more things will come to mind as perhaps helpful videos to make and i'll be putting those together as I'm progressing through this uh, this very long game <laughs> but it's very good so check it out and follow the tanking advice and uh, if you want to run a cypher 
check out my video on that too. So we'll see you in the next video.